it was merely one loss. Caleb Russell took the first five victories of the 2015 Grand National Cross Country Tour, then finished second at round six before emerging after a battle with Ryan Sipes to win again at round seven. Now his home race looms. Time for another streak. Hello everyone and welcome once again to Racer TV right here on NBCSN. Today the venerable Wysco John Penton GNCC. The 26th running of this event, named after John Penton, who was the man who originally imported the Woods Ready KTM motorcycle to the United States and really opened up dirt bike riding to the masses. And today KTM has one heck of a dirt bike rider in Caleb Russell, your two-time and defending champ and series leader there, the number one. Riders like Grant Baylor here have been challenging him as of late. Josh Strang coming in with an injury. He was second in points. Hey, there's John Penton and his son, Jack. Two very influential people in the history of this industry. But now it's time to go racing. Russell, by the way, grew up riding here, so he knows what to do. Although he's not going to get the whole shot, looks like Strang leading everyone in. And I have not seen Josh Strang nail a start like that in a long time. Little bonus money coming his way from All Balls Racing, but look at Russell all the way to the inside and all the way to the lead. Well, that didn't take long. The factory FMF KTM rider these days lives in North Carolina, but uh, his grandfather and his dad are actually the ones who have built this track for a long, long time. Now, that doesn't mean he got to ride here every day, but uh, certainly the soil is familiar to him. As far as the track goes, they usually change the layout each year. It's not like uh, he's riding the same exact uh, course that he did at age five. Jeez, Jordan Ashburn, hold on to that thing. And Russell out front. You already see the Loke fans pumped up about this. And opening up quite a lead. It is Baylor on the NFAB and Pro Yamaha up to second. Andrew DeLong, good to see him back up front. Now in third, ahead of Strang. DeLong returning from a collarbone break and Strang trying to fight his way back from a separated shoulder. So some wounded warriors there in the Husqvarna camp. Everyone else is trying to make their way up this hill, put themselves in position. And <laughs> Russell's hearing cheers everywhere we go. Now Baylor here, the class rookie, has given Russell a run a couple of times this year. So we'll see if he can do that. On the NFAB and Pro Yamaha, still DeLong and Strang filing in third and fourth. And I think that's Ashburn there who had that little mistake early ahead of Ryan Sipes. Those are two very fast riders, certainly capable of top three getting on the podium. But can they challenge Russell today? Not with this kind of start. And Russell, by the way, that was the last part of his game he put together, the starts. Struggled with them the last few years, but he's got it figured out now. And it really wasn't a technique thing. It was figuring out the motorcycle, the electric start, and getting it to fire quickly. And now that he's able to get the early lead, it, it just makes his job that much easier. It doesn't have to burn as much energy in the first lap making passes. Yes, this is all making the competition cringe when we tell you things like this. Oh, and Baylor struggling to find the right line at the bottom of this hill and through this ditch. Now at the top of the hill is Randy Hawkins, the owner and manager of the Ampro Yamaha team. Well, that was a disaster, and it's letting everyone else catch Baylor. Strang, DeLong, and now Sipes right there in contention. And Ashburn as well. So it's tightening up. And there's big, tall Chris Bach. He's the one that ended Russell's win streak earlier this year. Hey, the field looping right back on through, so a nice spot to see the running order. It's the three house Varnas, then Ashburn. But uh, Chris Bach had the ride of his life a couple of weeks ago in New York State, and he ended Russell's streak, and straight up, no excuses from the champ. He just got beat that day, and he is going to redouble his efforts to make sure that doesn't happen again. But look at Baylor, picking it back up after that mistake, getting away from everyone else, and trying to run down Russell. 
DeLong, Sipes, and Strang now. So DeLong has been battling Strang, but Sipes making moves as well. There's Thad Duvall with those yellow handguards. Takeshi Koikita and the nine of Bach on the Johnny Campbell racing machine. This terrain not make you want to grab a dirt bike or an ATV and go riding one of these events. Perfect weather here today as well. That's good. This race used to be known for either extreme dust or mud. Rarely in between. Wow, Sipes. Well, I was going to say he was up to second, but how long will it last? He's having a problem here. Looking down at the back of the motorcycle. Is his rear brake locked up? No, it's chain. So chain problems for Sipes. I can't believe what kind of a lead he had built up. He was not even in second the last time. Now he's got it apparently refired. Here is DeLong. Oh, Thad Duvall getting in the mix. Just a drag race of Husqvarna's up that hill. What happened to Baylor? He was at the front of that Husqvarna train. Now he's behind it. And a big gap back to everyone else. I think that's Strang coming through the dust. And like we said, Strang is riding hurt. He was the closest competitor for Russell early in the year. Strang, the uh, very likable Australian, started the year with four straight second place finishes to Russell. But now the shoulder injuries are costing him dearly in the points. Although I talked to Strang recently, shrugged his shoulders when it comes to points. He just wants to win races. Good battle going on here with DeLong and Sipes. We go through the water section. Baylor's back in it. Duvall right behind him. No, that's Strang again. Where's Duvall? It's Ashburn and then Duvall. And then Box. So we said it all year. Outside that battle for the lead, the racing has been fantastic today. Racer TV is brought to you by Amsoil. And by Rocky Mountain ATVMC.com. Welcome back, I'm Jason Wygant giving you the call. That's Caleb Russell leading this Wysco John Penton Grand National Cross Country event. Second place right now, 264, Ryan Sipes on the Air Group Rockstar Husky. And this guy should be exhausted. He's already put in a weekend's worth of work racing Lucas Oil Pro Motocross yesterday at Muddy Creek in Tennessee and finishing 11th overall in the 450 class. That's incredible. Now he's got three hours of work to do, holding off Andrew DeLong, who is in third. Stuart Baylor, who comes through next in fourth. Thad Duvall. Josh Strang hanging tough. Shoulder injury and all, keeping the podium in sight. Speaking of tough, watch this. Caleb Russell, yeah, roosting his own mom, who's on the side of the track with the pit board. Guess that's what it takes, man. You got to go fast through all the corners, whether mom's there or not. Sipes comes through in second. To be honest, Tina. Caleb's mom, she has been an integral part of his program from day one. So not going to stop now, just that he's a champ and factory rider. She's out in the woods lending assistance. Here comes Thad Duvall. Similar story for him. His dad was one of the all-time greats in the GNCC ATV ranks and uh, now spins the wrenches for him. His parents super integral to his program. The same thing with Stuart Baylor and Grant Baylor, who just saw go through there, the Baylor boys. Their parents were out every round. A truly family affair. And yes, Caleb Russell's dad, Jeff Russell, former national enduro champ, and he is the trail boss of the Grand National Cross Country Series. But that's always been a controversial topic, so you don't even see much of Jeff Russell on Sunday race day for the bikes. Uh, so no one starts getting any ideas of Jeff being out there in the woods, uh, pointing the good lines out to his son. So mom and uh, Caleb's wife, Chandler, They'll be out there cheering their man on, as well as, of course, the factory KTM staff. No big changes in the running order, but this group is still very close. Second place, or at least third, up for grabs. Sipes is good at the moment in second. We'll see if anyone can make a run at him. Here's Strang. Man, three hours of fighting a motorcycle like this with a separated shoulder. He has got to be in some pain, but these guys are warriors, there's no doubt. You're never going to have an injury-free, a perfect season. But of course, some injuries worse than others. Look at Russell blasting up this hill and onto a fire road. 
and Sipes settling in for second. It might not end up being a win today, but to go and finish just outside of the top 10 at a national motocross race, and then the next day get on the podium as he leads DeLong and Duval, that's a yeoman's-like effort, incredible effort from Sipes. He's still fast, although he's gonna deal with some company now. I think Duval wants to make a run for second. Wow, look at Russell, so much momentum at the bottom of that hill makes getting to the top look easy. Back to Sipes on the air group, Rockstar Husqvarna. A little bit rougher ride for him. That's the momentum that uh, Russell had at the bottom. Still DeLong in third. And waiting on Duval. There he is. Duval part of a Fred Andrews Racing and KR4 performance. But he, Sipes, Strang, DeLong all do get help from Husqvarna, even though there's a variety of teams at work there. Sipes has kind of put his own team together using some personal sponsors, but does get some factory support from Husky. DeLong, the traditional factory team, the Rockstar Husky effort. Again, Fred Andrews Racing and KR4 helping out Duval. But here's a Yamaha looking to break up this Husqvarna party. Grant Baylor has been up and down today, but starting to rally again down the stretch. Racer TV is brought to you by Amsoil. And by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Caleb Russell leads the way, although you wouldn't know it because he's got lap traffic all over him. All around him in front, behind, side by side. Ryan Sipes still second. This is the Weisco John Penton GNCC. Grant Baylor, we told you, is coming before the break, and he has made some moves. Up to third now, around Andrew DeLong and Thad Duval. Big steep hill climb for Russell here. It's amazing. You don't think of the state of Ohio as being hilly, but uh, there's plenty of elevation change out here. Also a really cool motocross track called Sunday Creek MX, and they do integrate that into our off-road loop here as well. Going to do six laps today of a little over 11 miles a lap. So you're looking at around 66, maybe 68 total miles, and you'll do it in around three hours. And it is amazing, these course builders, believe it or not, the old standard of enduro racing is 23 miles an hour. Now, enduro racing, which is a lot different than this, the whole idea was that you could not exceed that speed. You'd have to nail that speed exactly. Cross-country racing, more like motocross, you just go as fast as you possibly can. Whoever gets to the checkered flag first wins. But still, no matter what they do, the tracks end up averaging around that same speed. And although an average of 23 doesn't sound very quick, when you're dealing with terrain like this and you're going three hours unbelievably, brutally tiring, it's actually quite a pace. And if you ever get to go on YouTube and watch the, the GoPro footage of some of these riders with the helmet cams, you would not want to weave your way through the trees any faster than that. Now this section on the uphill, probably go a little quicker, but then you see down in the creek bottoms and the other areas we've gotten to, you've got to tractor your way on through those in first gear, much slower pace. Thad Duval with the yellow hand guards leaping to the top. He's making one last run for it, and here's why. He's fourth. You want to be top three and stand on the podium. Fourth place hurts more than practically any other position. Here's the Sunday Creek motocross track. Caleb Russell on it, about to take the white flag, looking to lead every lap today. He actually led every lap at the first four races this year. Then Grant Baylor came alive, gave him a challenge at round five in Indiana. Then Chris Bach was able to pull off that big upset and get his first career win and beat Russell in New York. Russell came back to win our last race in West Virginia and now looking to make it two straight in Ohio. And we all saw this coming a long time ago. It was a dominant rider in the amateur ranks and the youth ranks on mini cycles. But I have to say, I've been watching Caleb Russell probably race since he was maybe eight or nine years old. I knew he'd be good, not this good. This is just all time level to dominate in a series that's practically designed to prevent domination. You see Sipes up here in second, a great run for the motocrosser, probably 
pretty comfortable out here on the Sunday Creek track, although you have to prep it a lot different for a three-hour cross-country race. Can't keep running the water truck and the disc on it throughout the day like you would in a motocross event. Anyway, the point I'm making, when you have three-hour off-road races and pit stops and strategy and fatigue and all the things that can happen to a bike and body in that amount of time, a lot of times, riders just try to lead the final lap to win the race. They run a strategy game. You can't blow out your energy early. Don't want to take chances on crashes. The fact that Russell has been able to win and win by leading every lap was practically unheard of about 10 years ago. It absolutely never happened. These things were run like marathons, not sprints, and guys would hang out in fourth and fifth and then put a charge late. But when you have this kind of speed and this kind of technique, why wait? Because I have to imagine that on days like today, Russell probably isn't going to the wall on energy because he has a good enough lead. He can maintain it. Now, we've seen a few races this year, thanks to riders like Baylor and Bach, where he has been pushed. And I have to think the end of the win streak two rounds ago by Bach maybe took some pressure off of Russell, and he's actually riding even better now. Still, great credit to Sipes. He's starting to figure this game out. Second full year as an off-road racer, leaving the motocross world behind besides those occasional runs. Second today, that's pretty good. Grant Baylor up to third. Let's see if he can keep holding Duval at bay. Racer TV is brought to you by Amsoil. And by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Waning moments of this three-hour John Penton GNCC part of the Amsoil Grand National Cross Country Series. Caleb Russell leads it. He has led since the third quarter when he made a move on Josh Strang, who grabbed the whole shot. Now Strang is out of this race. He hung in there for two hours, but the shoulder gave out. Ryan Sipes in second, picking his way through the lap traffic. And here is Grant Baylor in third. Dad Duvall was only 11 seconds behind Baylor here when the white flag came out. Baylor has put a little distance between himself and Duvall, but now we hear Duvall is starting to close back up. So it's gonna be a showdown right to the end for third in this one, and a chance to get on the podium, thank the sponsors. And you know Duvall wants it. Sipes just ahead of them. Sipes started the year struggling, was not in the top five in her first five rounds, but now he's looking for three straight in the top three. And big Stu Baylor, your two-time champion in the XC2 division. That's the smaller 250cc bikes beneath this, kind of the stepping stone. You see Duvall starting to close on Baylor. Baylor, a rookie, first time racing on the front row on the big bikes, so he's still figuring out when to use energy and when to save it. Sipes is figuring it out for other reasons as he fights through the mud. Again, he raced motocross yesterday. He's tired. He's trying to get that Husqvarna to the finish. Here comes Baylor around the traffic. Oh, and he's stuck. He's stuck. This could open the door for Duvall, and it does. Duvall's right there. Russell continues to lead and is headed out of the woods for what should be the last time. Sipes, what an effort for second. And maybe he could become Russell's challenger for wins down the stretch. Baylor's on the move. He knows Duvall's right there. And Duvall fighting the dust. Oh, is he cranking right now? To the Sunday Creek Motocross track for the last time. Caleb Russell looking to make it seven wins in eight rounds this year. Even doing the big uphill jumps late in the game. Certainly doesn't need to for speed. This is just fun for him. And the local product, born and raised here in Southern Ohio, is going to win in his local race. There was a one race scare. But Caleb Russell, in the last two rounds, let everybody know he's back on top in GNCC Racing. And Ryan Sipes, wow. I want to see some uh, data on this guy. How many calories did he burn throughout the weekend? He goes 12-10 in his motos in pro motocross yesterday. He finishes second today. And still enough energy to do some fist pumping at the finish. Good job by the Kentucky boy. 
Here's Baylor trying to run and hide from Duval. Oh, it is close. After three hours, this is what it's going to come down to. Baylor's got to stay clean. No lap riders between them now. Duval's closed right up and he jumps right to the rear fender of Baylor. Baylor hangs on, handful of throttle. Lapper gets between them and Baylor will take third. Ah, oh, that Duval. Great charge down the stretch, make it interesting. The long fifth, that's good progress after starting the year injured. Ashburn, Stu Baylor, the older Baylor brother, seventh. Bach, Koikita, Chris Douglas, that's the top 10. Brought to you by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Here's your Amsoil race recap. Early lead for Russell, he gets around Josh Strang. See, that's pack right here, second on back. They would stay that close for most of the way. As Russell got away on the KTM 350, Ryan Seif would emerge from that battle for second. Couldn't make a run at Russell, but certainly was good enough to build some distance over everyone else. Down the stretch, you had Grant Baylor and Thad Duvall battling it out. Baylor would hold on for the third place position. Caleb Russell wins again. Congrats to him. I'm Jason Wygant. For everyone at Racer TV, thanks for watching.